So now goes back to the other. You would ask what happens if the composition is what? Outside the spin nodal decomposition range. Specifically, outside this so called uh, inflection point region. So called, uh, this dashed line is what people call chemical spin nodal. Repeat with me chemical spin nodal. This dashed line means chemical spin nodal, and the chemical spin nodal is obtained by getting the so called uh, inflection points at a different uh, temperature. This particular curve is for a particular temperature. At different temperature, you would get different curve, but when you connect all those inflection points, you get this dashed curve, which we call, repeat with me, chemical spin nodal. Okay? So within the chemical spin nodal, you are rest assured your so-called secondary second derivative of the Gibbs free energy was the composition curve is always curvature is always negative. Make sense? Okay. So similar as before, we are still looking at a similar system, and now we are looking at another composition, certain composition x zero prime x zero prime. Look. And now I put, as Santanu mentioned, I put x0 prime in the so called blue region within the miscibility gap, but outside the chemical spin node. Make sense? Within the miscibility gap, which, which means within this solid line, but outside the dashed line, the outside chemical spin node, that's where we are. x0 prime is here. Okay? Now look at here x0 prime. Do you see x0 prime now is associated with a so called positive second uh, derivative. Make sense? Positive curvature. Make sense? Concave up. And I'll put another way. It's between from x1, x1, phase boundary, phase boundary. And xs, xs for the limit of one of the so called chemical spin nodal. Make sense? x1, chemical spin nodal. x is x0 prime is between x1 and xs. Here. Okay. Now we are still doing what? Remember, phase transformation, solid, solid state phase transformation, going from T1 to T2. T1 is higher than critical temperature, T2 is lower than critical temperature. Something like this, going from T1 to T2. Make sense? Except now our composition is outside the chemical spin nodal. Make sense? Okay. And uh, now, if G0, that means what? What does this point mean? When I just quench to here, what structure do I have? Similarly, it has the single phase alpha. It falls onto this curve, right? That's uh, your so-called Gibbs free energy initially, G0. And GEQ, that is our what? It's on the common tangent line. That's your so-called final Gibbs free energy. Make sense? system gives free energy and this now you have a small driving force make sense small driving force from g0 to geq this tiny bit that's become your small driving force it's still increase or decrease decrease right from high to low it's still decrease which means it still could happen energetically favorable and uh, that's what it said. Initial energy G0 is still higher than equilibrium energy. On the other hand, now if I similarly have a, this pink curve for a so called composition fluctuation, if I go from one single composition to one that is a little bit linear and the other part a little bit richer, with this pink curve. So in this process, if I just go through this from a little bit linear to half 
a little, sorry, from uniform to half that is a little bit leaner and the other half a little bit richer. The system energy has to go which way? From the blue one now go up or down? Up. It has to go up a little bit. Make sense? Is this spontaneous? From low to high, is this spontaneous? No, that's not spontaneous. As a result, the read this thing. The small composition fluctuation, similar to what we dealt with before, from one uniform to half that is linear, half that is a little bit richer. Small composition fluctuation near a regional concentration leads to actually a small increase in energy, which means it's not spontaneous. It doesn't really want to go through this way. Make sense? Do you see that? From here to here, it actually increased. Because of this, but uh, from initial to the equilibrium, I still have a driving force. So what happens? Then in this case, the spinodal decomposition doesn't really happen because you're going from one to two neighboring, is you have to increase energy. It doesn't want to happen. What happens, it needs to go through the same old-fashioned, read to yourself, nucleation process. It needs to create a distinct interface. It still happens, but it involves the creation of a distinct interface between the new phase that formed and the so-called host or matrix phase. Okay, that the new phase must have very different uh, composition from the matrix. And actually, to illustrate that, we would quite often people would construct locally draw a tangent line. And that tangent line would intercept with this Gibbs free energy line. And this intercept, people call it critical concentration. So whatever the new phase nucleated has to cause concentration that is much richer than the initial and actually richer than Xc. Only under that condition, we can form the new phase. And now, whatever forms here, it has very different what? From here versus here, it will have very different composition. And quite often, this process would involve certain so-called interfacial energy. Because the composition is very different, lattice parameter, as a result, is somewhat different. And that's so-called uh, nucleation. Whatever formed, if I can freeze it, I can identify the local region composition-wise is very, very different from what? Your original, your matrix or your host. Make sense? Now you can distinctively by SEM edX, local edX mapping, you can say, wow, this region is very rich. Make sense? This is what happens when the initial composition is outside the chemical spin nodal, but still within the miscibility gap, okay? It needs to go through the creation of a distinct interface, nucleation growth process, okay? And in this case, we will talk about in a moment, it's still so-called conventionally downhill diffusion. It's still conventional downhill diffusion. I will explain in a minute. And it may stay at so-called metastable state. It may not necessarily reach the so-called equilibrium okay because exactly because the barrier exactly because you are forming a distinct interface you need to overcome that barrier you have to wait and that's the fundamental reason okay so now let me just borrow your time a little bit we are still looking at the same system except now our composition of x zero prime is outside the chemical spin nodal, but still within the miscibility gap, something here, okay? And uh, this is our initial composition. And initially everything is what? Right when I quench to here, everything is flat. Make sense? Everything is flat, means everything is uniform. But then it doesn't go through the so-called spin nodal decomposition. The first bit, of precipitate or the other phase form out. It has to be something like this, I see, or even richer. We would draw it, okay, let's say the first bit phase formed, it just directly have the composition of X2. 
the stable one. And then if we assume so-called fast interfacial reaction, whatever equilibrium with x2 at the interface is the x1. So x2 here, x1 here. But then when we are far away from interface, far away from interface, what concentration should it be? If we are far away from interface, we should still be our original concentration, which is very close to x0. Make sense? So within the so-called alpha 1 phase, from here to here, it's going from downhill, going from x0 to x1, going from x0 to x1. The solute is going from x0 to x1. That's so-called downhill diffusion. And then whenever it comes to here, whenever it comes to here, the structure would change the locally and the alpha 2 become larger. I would have so-called a phase transformation going from alpha 1 here to alpha 2. So this is what people call a so-called downhill diffusion. Within the same matrix, it's still downhill diffusion. Okay. So let me just uh, 